This show is not intended to offend, harm, belittle, accuse, instigate, objectify, etc. Any person, place, thing, establishment, entity, or business of any kind, color, creed, faith, belief, condition, creation, etc. On this show, I will speak my mind and give my opinion on the topics at hand. Any offense in anything taken out of context is your fault. What's up? What it do, man? It's your boy, Daddy Gamer, a.k.a. Player One, the guy himself, a.k.a. the unofficial, official, professional of all things video games and technology. And welcome to another episode of The Gamers Den, the show where I go over video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. And we start this thing off with a thing called Level One News. Yes, sir. So before we get into Level One News, just want to shout out to everybody. Appreciate everybody tapping into the show. Another episode of the show. We in here. You dig what I'm saying? This episode um, could potentially get me canceled. This episode could uh, potentially get me a lot of backlash. This episode will be very controversial, right? Not because of me per se, and, or that's yet to be seen or heard. But at the same time, we're just going to be on a lot of touchy, top, uh, touchy subjects. So with that being said, um, you already know I'm going to speak my mind and give my two cents on it. And it was just something I was I was honestly having a conversation, uh, you know, a little while before recording this episode. And I might talk about it when we get to level two news and bring it up. So um, we are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Samsung Podcasts. Um, wherever you can listen to this uh, and have the audio experience, the visual experience is on Rumble TV, Hideout TV, and YouTube.com slash DevTheGamer for clips and also go live on there. So with that being said, let's get into level one news. Headline reads, Marvel's Avengers development ending. Hold up. Now, what did I just say on a couple previous past episodes? I said with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, I don't know how long it's going to be here and or give or take. And I did try to shoot some bail, but I was going to do a comparison. Um, well, I don't have to do a comparison anymore. Marvel's Avengers is ending. Development for the game is ending. Now, I, I know y'all know like, dang, bro, you called it again. You called it again. Yes, I know I called it again. But with that being said, I have little hope for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League now, mainly because we're stuck in this live service era of gaming for some apparent reason. And once again, I already went through that with the origin of Battle Royale games. So we all know that because it's making these companies and these brands billions of dollars, they're not going to stop. So we have to stop. And how you do that is with our wallets. So we have to enforce them and or force them to create more creative games and just give us a different gaming experience because I don't know what the next wave of game is going to be because it seems like we're just sticking to one archetype mainly and then that's pretty much it or just milk it till it's all gone. You know, I miss the days of gaming where all the games were different, but then like they were almost all fire. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's go ahead and get into this article. Article reads, the team at Crystal Dynamics has announced the end of development for its live service Marvel's Avengers game. The news comes two and a half years after the game's fall 2020 launch. In that time, the Marvel's Avengers development team released 12 playable heroes, a full expansion set in Wakanda, multiple character focused operations, and several smaller pieces of content. The 2.7 update, which arrived November 30th, 2022, adding Winter Soldier and the Cloning Lab Omega Level Threat was the final new content for Marvel's Avengers. Crystal Dynamics has planned one final title update, version 2.8, to arrive on March 31st, 2023. This update will not add any new content. Instead, it will deliver final balance updates 
and turn off the cosmetics markets place marketplace what the hell yep so uh cosmetic marketplace gone no more content for the game gone once this update arrives credits will not be purchasable and all remaining credits and players accounts will be converted to in-game resources like units fragments upgrade modules polycorn uh well we're gonna call it polycorn for the sake of this it's, it's, it looks a little funnier that way polycorn <laughs> and dna keys what the hell as a result of the markets play of, of the marketplace's closure all the game's marketplace challenge card and shipment cosmetic content will be made free to all players this means all outfits takedowns emotes and nameplates from those sources will be free for all players starting on March 31st. Official support for Marvel's Avengers will end completely on September 30th. What the hell? After that time, single player and multiplayer will still be playable, but Crystal Dynamics is unlikely to address any additional issues with the game. The game will also be delisted from digital storefronts at that time. What the hell? Marvel's Avengers received middling, yeah, middling reviews at launch, with many praising the single player content. However, it was the repetitive multiplayer modes, abundant microtransactions, and the development team's slow implementation of new content that soured many fans on the title. So, um, you know, it's a, it was a lot to go into Marvel's Avengers when it dropped, you know, the, the story. I know some people, or you had some gamers who really didn't like the story you had some gamers who really didn't uh you know like you know everything that came with the game and you know that's fine you know everybody not gonna like everything but with that being said i did say previous episode that i was gonna do a comparison and with that and suicide squad kill the justice league but now i think i don't need to because making something live service like i said we're stuck in this live service era of gaming for some reason and I think it's coming to an end. I've been seeing a lot of headlines and a lot of thumbnails. YouTube been recommending me to watch and I'm not watching them because, well, I've been new as the gamers fault um, to a degree, right? That gaming may or might may or may not be fun anymore. And I think it's because everybody has made everything mad political. Like everything is not a social movement and everything is not a political movement. Like, God damn, bro. Like now, granted, and mind you, Yes, video games do pull from real world events, real world stories. We could take a Assassin's Creed franchise, for example. It, they might not be blow for blow, bar for bar, you know, the exact events of these places and times that they take place, but they do derive from events that happened in real time. Same thing with movies, right? Movies are a fantasy world, it's fantasy land. It's not real, but there is a sense of realism there are real situations in movies that do happen in real life. So with that being said, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League will unfortunately suffer the same fate because of this live service BS. When will live service end? Well, it's, we gonna have it for at least another five, maybe 10 years. Just given the simple fact that, um, you know, Sony, they're working on a, a new IP with um, Haven Studios. Y'all know I'm keeping my tabs on that. And it's and, and my thing is, I'm not really trying to say, you know, live service is now saturated, but it gets to a point where every single game doesn't need it because that, that type of feature or element of gaming doesn't work for everything. And the Rock of Blade point is forever going to be my example for this because I'm thinking, okay, we're getting a new multiplayer samurai type of game, but Battle Royale, like, dude, it's this it this has to stop i know everybody in the gaming industry looks that they look at me and they listen to me like who is this handsome guy talking all this shit hold up hey. excuse the language for the sensitive ears but don't be taking it out on me all i'm saying is tone it down like tone it down if it works it works if it don't it don't let's look at the borderlands franchise for example this is a game where one of the games are consistently being played to this day. People are still making content out of Borderlands 2 to this day. Now, 
is Gearbox really putting any effort into it anymore? No, Borderlands 3 is here. And even now, is they putting any effort into Borderlands 3 or Tiny Teenage Wonderland? Not really much. Not really. So what you got to understand is some games don't need live service. Some games don't need Battle Royale. They tried it with Borderlands 3. You know, that, that type of system was hit or miss. You know, um, it was a miss overall, in my opinion. But at the same time, who knows what they're going to keep and what they're going to throw away once Borderlands 4 come out. So, yeah. Um, since it's, since Suicide Squad's Kill the Justice League is going to have this live service element, it's probably not going to last long. We don't need Battle Pass. We don't need... It's, it's going to be over, bro. Like, that's, that's going to be short-lived. But, right, but let's move into the next thing in Level 1 News. All right. Headline reads... Tiki Tok, TikTok confirms that its own employees can decide what goes viral. Hold up. Now, I do not be on Tiki Tok. Will you find a TikTok account with me on it? Yes, you will. But I'm not actively on Tiki Tok. I actually despise Tiki Tok. Not for any political reasons, not for any socialist agenda reasons, just I just don't like it. I just, just know my attention span is longer than, you know, five seconds. Like I don't, I'm cool. This is why I do this for people whose attention span is like 20 hours long. I, this, the short form really ain't my thing. I'm not a short form guy. Like if you want to have a conversation with me, expect to be talking for like two hours minimum. Cause I do this, I do this show and I can literally talk for three hours and make this a three hour show. If I wanted to, I can make this a six hour show if I wanted to. This episode might be an hour and a half if I'm, if I'm being completely honest with you, but that's neither here nor there because apparently it is being confirmed due to reports or through reports that these people are controlling what's going up and what's going down. So let's go ahead and get into it. TikTok has confirmed to Forbes that some of its U.S. employees have the ability to boost videos in order to, quote unquote, introduce celebrities and emerging creators to the TikTok community, end quote. Hold up. The statement comes as part of a report about TikTok's quote unquote heating button, which Forbes says can be used to put selected videos onto users for you pages, helping boost views by sidestepping the algorithm that supposedly drives the TikTok experience. A spokesperson for TikTok told Forbes that Increasing views to particular videos isn't the only reason for heating. Tiki Tok will also, quote unquote, promote some videos to help diversify the content experience, end quote. This spokesperson also said and suggests TikTok doesn't do it that often, claiming only, quote unquote, 0.002% of videos in your in for you feeds are heated. Hold up. Hey. That's sad. According to an internal document, heated videos reportedly make up around one to two percent, quote unquote, of quote unquote total daily video views. End quote. So uh, let's stop right here. I'm gonna be honest with you. It don't matter if it's zero, if it's point zero 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 five percent. It don't matter. The fact that they can manipulate it is all you need to know. That's all you need to know. It's like when Elon Musk got on Twitter and he said, hey, you know the little sparkly thing on the corner? That's how you stay up to date with everything. Now, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of did and didn't know that. If I knew it before, I forgot. So when he tweeted that, I was like, oh, all right, yeah, that changes things. But it really didn't change much because my thought process was still the same. People be on social media too much, you know, and TikTok is a very big platform. I'm not going to lie. You know, I think I missed the boat when it comes to Tiki Tok as far as blowing up and be able to get my page monetized and uh, turning up because everybody doing all the dances and now everybody being social activists and political and being political and all this other stuff. And I'm like, bro, I honestly just kind of don't care. But with this being said, this just goes to show that 
this and this not only that this confirms a theory that i also had that they are controlling and or tracking you they're tracking you and deciding what to show you right so let me go big screen real quick i'm gonna tell y'all this experiment i did i did an experiment so a few months ago right a few months ago actually yeah months ago i got a new tv right we got a new tv i set the tv up smart tv right broken I was like, you know what? I'm not going to sign into my YouTube channel. I'm going to just leave it blank and I'm going to just start watching certain videos and see what it tells me. It started basically telling me or it started suggesting and recommending me videos or whatever the case and or certain videos I was watching on different devices or whatever it was or based on however much I did watch, it was just showing up there. Now, mind you, I'm not signed in. So how do you know what I do and don't like, no matter how many times I watch it, if I'm not signed in? You can't track a singular account. But with this, it now kind of confirms that they either have the technology or these softwares and things in place to where they can track usage, no matter if you have an account or not. Because if they can control what percent or, or how much they are going to do it, because this could be a lot, but let's just take it for what it is, right? 0.002% of videos are being heated. Okay, that's cool, but guess what? It's the fact that you're controlling this is the whole point. It's not an organic feed, which in turn, nothing on social media is organic. I know y'all like, what the hell? And when I say nothing on social media is organic, whatever you're recommended is pretty much not organic because they're either going to curate it to you or it's going to be based off of whatever the data you've compiled and given to them over the years. So, you know, what um so far you Tiki Talk people, I just wanted to put this out there that um they are even though it is a small percent, they are manipulating and, you know, boosting up certain videos. It might not be a lot, it might not be an exceptional amount, but they have the ability to do so. So, just keep that in mind when you start looking on Tiki Talk and or all these social medias and you see what's going viral and what's not going viral. All right, let's get into the last thing with level one news. Headline reads, California's $10 million e-bike rebates are coming. Here are the latest updates. Yes, all my Cali people, all my West Coast people, California, stand up, boy. Um, Yeah, man, so e-bikes are here, man. And we, um, you know, I've been talking about this and covering this from time to time where some states are, or I think federally, they might even do this. I might have to check it up or find that episode. It's so long ago I did that episode. Um, I digress. They are offering, uh, you know, like tax breaks or rebates and stuff of that nature to people if you have an e-bike or if you get a certain class of e-bike. So you may be able to get a kickback. So let's go ahead and get into it. California is set to join a number of other cities and states in the U.S. by offering rebates and tax credits for electric bicycles. California's Electric Bicycle Incentives Project has been over a year in the making and recently saw new updates to the planned rebates. The updates come after an end of the year meeting of the California Air Resources Board, it's funny, that's CARB, to discuss the parameters of the Electric Bicycle Incentives Project. According to the California Bicycle Coalition, after the meeting, members of the discussion included representatives from the e-bike industry, bicycle shop owners, nonprofits who work with, with potential voucher recipients, bicycle coalition leaders, and members of the public interested in the program. The program's details were still being finalized at the end of the year, but the meeting helped shed more light on the aspects of the program that have already been decided. Oh, I went down too far. One of the new updates is additional funding for the program. $10 million had already been earmarked for the program, but we've now learned that an additional $3 million in funding will be added to the total, likely to help with program outreach that would allow more of the initial $10 million to go directly toward the e-bike rebates themselves. Okay, okay, not too bad. CARB also confirmed that the income limit to qualify for the e-bike voucher will be lowered. It was previously reported that in order to qualify for the voucher, participants' household income would have to be below 400% of the federal poverty line. What? Hold up. Hey. 
which amounts to 51,000 for a single person and 106,000 for a family of four at current figures. What the hell? So I hit the I hit the Gucci button because um for all my people and you make less than fifty thousand a year, yeah you ain't about to get nothing back for your e bike. You got to get your money up. You got to get your money up, man. Get your money up. But um this is cool though, you know that four hundred percent number is mad wild. But uh that's not too bad though. Fifty thousand, fifty one thousand. That's not too bad, you know. That's not too bad. But if the federal poverty line is around, that's that's wild. Anyway, um, yeah, man, so that's cool so far. Let's go ahead and get into it some more. Uh, I'll read this a little bit. Now we've learned that the income limit will be lowered to 300% of the federal poverty line to align the eligibility requirements for the e-bike program with those of other CARB clean vehicle programs. That would amount to approximately 38000 for a single person or $79,500 for a family of four. Okay, so it's apparently lower. So I guess we could say upwards of $106,000, you know, six figures. We could say, you know, upwards of lower six figures. Um, so this is this this is cool. You know, this is definitely cool. A, a state like California, I know California, y'all like, oh man, e-bikes, e-bikes, e-bikes. Well, California, y'all got to understand something. Y'all big as hell, and y'all got like almost a whole one-third of the entire country in one state. So, um... Understand something when people ain't got it. And I'm gonna keep it real with you. It's a lot of people up there out there in California who ain't got it. Like it's it's people out there who just ain't got it. You know? And I and I'm all for hustling and bustling, you know. I'm all for, you know, getting the grind, you know, working, hustling, do what you gotta do, whether it's a job, entrepreneurship. I'm with that. But, you know, it's also, you know, being built for something. You know what I'm saying? being built for that type of environment. If you just ain't got that that fire in you, that burn, that drive in you, you're not going to make it out there. You know, I have conversations with people from California all the time, and I let them know, like, if I was to live in California, I would really have to have my money straight or and my things straight before I get out there. Because now with this e-bike thing, that's cool. I would definitely be riding my e-bike a lot just for the simple fact that it's another mode of transportation and it'll save me on gas. It'll save me, you know, a couple extra dollars here and there. And the fact that, you know, average rent in California is like, what, maybe $2,000 now at this point? You know, some people is like, what the hell? They hear $2,000 and think that's a lot. Because in other places, people not paying $2,000 for a two-bedroom, you know what I'm saying? Or another amount of bedroom. So the fact that, you know, these e-bike programs and these things are going to be in place, that's, that's cool. And, you know, you get it, you can get a little kickback from it because, you know, like it did mention in the article tax credits, because you can get a type of tax credit or tax break for having an e-bike. So, you know, it's just all based on your hustle at the end of the day with this, with, with, with these rebates and, you know, the tax credits. It's all about your hustle and your grind. I'm, I'm all for people doing what they can to, you know, grind, invest in yourself, your business, whatever it is. I grind myself. But like I said, if I was to ever live out west, you know, or going towards the West. And I want everybody to understand this. Depending on which direction you go, North, South, East, West, or based on the region, you may or may not pay higher or lower expenses. So I know for, I know going out West, your expenses might become a little higher based on region, based on, you know, how things is built out there versus the East Coast, Midwest, the South, where prices might be a little lower for the same two bedroom or the same office space or whatever the case, because it snows there or it doesn't snow there. It rains a lot here. It doesn't rain a lot there. It's a lot of different factors that, that go into it. The laws of what's the taxes like, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of different things that go into that. So yeah, I'm a gamer and I know y'all like, bro, we talking about, you talking about this. I know y'all like, hold up. But no, nah, listen, you can't play video games if you broke. And more importantly, you can't play video games if you're homeless. And you can't play video games if you can't even go to the store to buy your PlayStation 5 or your Xbox or your Nintendo Switch. So, come on, man. You don't want to be the broke. I, I mean, listen, I'm, I, I feel people that are struggling, but at the end of the day, you, you got to be the one to get yourself up. And I know in a place like California, the threshold may or may not be high based on your position. You know, 
So, you know, it is what it is, but it's, it's good that, you know, rebates and programs for e-bikes and things like that are happening and that's going to be accessible to people. So that's going to do it for level one news. If you made it this far, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're in a visual form. With that being said, let's go ahead and run the commercial. Gaming, art, music. I believe these are some of the most potent forms of expression. I love to create and bring things to life. Can't forget fashion. How we appear lets the world know who we are. Everything I do is who I am. And I'm sharing that with the universe. Welcome to my world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure y'all follow me and turn my Instagram up. Make sure, so that's Instagram.com slash DevTheGamerXIV. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash DevTheGamer. Episode two of High Score Sundays just passed, which means this Sunday, the final episode of the mini series is happening. So make sure you subscribe to catch that on Sunday. Also, I'm live streaming. I've been consistently live streaming. I know, it's rare. I know y'all like, Hold up. Hey. Yes, bro. I'm consistently streaming every Friday, every Saturday. I'm consistently streaming. I've been doing this for like the past two, three weeks, if not the whole month of January. I've been consistently streaming. And right now we up. So come check out the streams, man. I'm about to buy a game and we about to be streaming a new game. And then it's going to be that. It's going to be Master Duel in the new game. I'm going to be streaming because I've been wanting to play this game for a hot minute. And I'm going to buy it now. I'm going to buy it. There's two games I can buy, but I'm a, I'm a flip. I'm, a, I'm either flipping the coin or I'm just buying one. But I'm live streaming on on the channel consistently, so make sure y'all subscribe. YouTube.com slash DevTheGamer XIV. Oh, not XIV. It's just YouTube.com slash DevTheGamer. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. YouTube.com slash DevTheGamer. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the main topic. Yes, sir. Level two, the main topic. So, it's 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 been a lot going on actually over the past few days in the gaming world, especially with Forspoken getting ready to come out and you know Hogwarts. And I was gonna talk about Forspoken because y'all know I've been hyping that game up, but you know a lot of people are just bashing that game right now, and I don't have a copy of the game myself. I don't have it yet. It didn't drop on Steam yet, as far as I know. So, um, you know, I'm going to just leave it where it's at. And honestly, I don't, I don't speak about games like everybody else do or in the way that everyone else does, right? Oh, they did this. They're this. You know, all the socialist political BS. I'm not, I'm not with all that. Like, if anything, my, like, when I review games, yeah, I'm going to talk about the story. And then my, if I take any shots, it's not going to be at, the CEO of Square, Sony, Microsoft, whoever, 343. No, I'm going to come at the developer because you the one who sat down here and made this shit. Excuse me for the sensitive years, but you, you the one who made this. You made this and you put this in the game. And then when y'all took it to the board meeting, that's where I'm going to be mad at everybody. I'm like, bro, y'all, y'all put, y'all, y'all made the game, took it to the board meeting, and then y'all showed it to everybody. And it was like, we'll go with that. I'm sitting here like, Hold up. You gave that the green light? What? Oh no. Nah. That this need refinement, right? And and you know, and, and a lot that's going on with Forspoken right now is kind of what I've been saying about gaming for a long time now. And I think and, and remember earlier I said, you know, we're gonna talk about, you know, games suck or you know, whatever it is. 
this is going to be one of those things. This, this is where we at. This is where we at right now. So uh, before we get into it, we're going to talk about this Hogwarts legacy situation, right? Because uh, this is actually important, and this goes into what I wanted to bring up and talk about. So when it, gaming nowadays has been um, really, it's really 50-50, you know? Because the big issue is these games are incomplete. These games are incomplete. They're selling the rest of the game as DLC. You and I know that we can name a handful of games plus some where they sold us the game and then they sold us DLC and the DLC wasn't much. And you sit there and be like, this could have just been in the original game. Because, well, microtransactions. And this is due to live service and battle royale. Because microtransactions for the companies became became so successful and they've made a lot of money. Well, all right, let's microtransaction everything out. We just heard it in Marvel Lake and Marvel Avengers. They about to just make everything free. Why? Because well, they're not about to have anything to do with the game after September, apparently. So with that being said, they just selling everybody games and it's it's starting to affect single player games. And this is why I don't want to speak on Forspoken because it's starting to affect single player games in the sense of Okay, we might not be selling you cosmetics up the yin yang, but we we still going to half you out and we still going to hold you and stall you out on the content. And I think with Forspoken is not so much of content is performance. And this moves the conversation forward, performance. You have people who argue about frame rate. You have people who argue about the, the storage space and the hard drive and oh, I got to read, I got to delete games and download games and blah, blah, blah. all these dis ungrateful gripe having people, right? And my thing is this. I will accept 720p if everything else performance wise outdoes that because graphics, there needs to be an average standard of graphics at this very point in gaming. Things need to be able to be held consistently at 1080p. If it's not HD 1080p screaming SODMG LV this something is wrong. I'm gonna make that a button that way y'all know where I get that from. Now, obviously, if you know, you know, but for the people who don't know, we're gonna get you a button over here. We're gonna get you the button. HD 1080p screaming S O D O G L V I A man. Hey, shout out Joseph. Anyway, though, um, you know, that's just what it is. So with that being said, we're going to get into this Hogwarts legacy stuff because this is just going further the conversation even more. All right. Headline reads major gaming forum issues, total ban on discussion of Hogwarts legacy. What the hell? So um, we have issues going on. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Reset Terra, I guess that's what it's called. Reset Terra, Reset Terra. We're just going to say Reset Terra. Uh, Reset Terra? No, 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 no. Hold up. Going back to Reset Terra. Reset Terra staff have expanded an existing ban on promotional material for the game. One of the biggest online gaming forums has said it will not host any discussion of Hogwarts Legacy, increasing the scope of a previously issued ban. Reset Terra had previously banned new posts about promotion for Hogwarts Legacy, preventing users from starting new discussions about trailers and other showcases. Instead, all of those conversations were limited to a single ongoing thread. In a post, however, the forum's general manager said that, quote unquote, the mod team has decided to expand our prior ban on promotion for the Hogwarts game to include the game itself. What the hell? No discussion of this game, end quote, allowed on the site. What the hell? Man, Gucci's starting to act up. I'm, I've been tapping him all day. The post also outlines the mod team's decision, saying that as, quote unquote, we began outlining the issues put forth by Rowling and the game in question each time we kept coming back to the simple fact that Rowling is actively pushing in her position as a wealthy and famous individual for legislation 
that will hurt trans people. What the hell? The decision by Reset Terra's staff is the latest in a suite of protests around the game, many seeming to pertain directly to Rowling's views. On Steam, user tags were changed to include to include terms including quote unquote transphobia, psychological horror, damn. After the game's cast reveal, one actor issued a statement in support of trans people after receiving backlash for their decision to appear in the game. And one activist raised for raised oh they they y'all hey 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 y'all was doing good. Y'all was doing good. I know everybody like hold up. But no, nah, if you if you ain't new here and you've been here for a while, you know what's you know what's making me upset. What's up with you people not knowing how to write sentences, man? I ain't have to name drop one of y'all and cuss y'all out in a in a long time. Don't don't make me do this in 2023, man. Is, is this what I gotta do? I gotta get on y'all. I thought we had this situated. We was doing good. And one activist raised for then. That's it. That's what what the fuck. Okay. One actor issued a statement in support of trans people after receiving backlash for their decision to appear in the game. And one activist did something and raised $5,000 in 24 hours by encouraging people to donate the cost of the game to a trans charity. Now, I know a lot of y'all are wondering, what could J.K. Rowling have possibly said to get this type of reaction towards the game. Let's find out. Hogwarts Legacy is one of the most anticipated video games of 2023, but it's also facing boycotts and controversy due to its associations with Harry Potter creator J.K. Rowling. Right? Now, just, just to reiterate that, I just want to make sure y'all get that under control. And make sure y'all understand that completely. The main reason people are boycotting Hogwarts Legacy is because of its association with J.K. Rowling. The author has been accused of making transphobic comments on multiple occasions over the past few years. What the hell? LGBTQ plus media charity GLAD, G-A-L-A-A-D, has a pretty comprehensive list of all the comments that have been made by Rowling but the main point of concern is an essay published by the author on June 10th, 2020 that listed five, quote unquote, five reasons for being worried about the new trans activism. What the hell? In this essay, Rowling stated that she was, quote unquote, concerned about the huge explosion in young women wishing to transition and also about the increasing numbers who seem to be detransitioning. End quote. She also brought up the bathroom debate, which has received plenty of media attention in recent years. We have a quote, and I'm going to read it. Quote, unquote. When you throw open the doors of bathrooms and changing rooms to any man who believes or feels he's a woman, and as I've said, gender confirmation certificates may now be granted without any need for surgery or hormones, then you open the door to any and all men who wish to come inside. That is the simple truth, end quote, she wrote. Apparently, that was what J.K. Rowling said. In response to J.K. Rowling's comment, LGBTQ plus charity mermaids Hold up. Yes, I said mermaids, and I will read it again. And I'm going to highlight it for all the blind people in the back, and I'm going to say it louder for all my people with the hearing aids in the back. In response to J.K. Rowling's comments, LGBTQ plus charity mermaids issued a statement where they called on the Harry Potter author to quote unquote, meet with transgender young people and listen to them with an open mind and hope and heart, end quote, before speaking about them. More quotables, quote unquote. We do not consider it a crime for women to express concern. We do, however, consider it abusive and damaging when people conflate trans women with male sexual predators 
impute sexual criminality to trans identities, suggest that support of a trans child is parental homophobia and misogyny, and share uncorroborated and inaccurate information, which severely damages the lives of trans and non-binary people. What the hell? Rowling has also faced backlash for her 2020 novel, Troubled Blood, which features a cisgender male serial killer who dresses up as a woman to lure victims. Mermaids call this quote-unquote a long-standing and somewhat tired trope responsible for the demonetization, yeah, the demonetiza demonetization, oh my god, y'all can't spell here either, for the demonetization of a small group, no, the demonization, you know, that's my fault. I'm still kind of upset about that previous article. Now I'm spelling it, head ass. Quote, unquote, a long-standing and somewhat tired trope responsible for the demonization of a small group of people, end quote. On other occasions, Roland has liked a tweet that referred to a trans woman, that referred to trans women as, quote, unquote, men in dresses, which her representatives defended as a, quote, unquote, clumsy and middle-aged moment, end quote, and tweeted, quote, unquote, big love to you, end quote, to somebody who Pink News have called a quote-unquote anti-trans, anti-gay, anti-abortion activist, end quote. Okay, we about to stop right here. We, we about to stop right here. Did, did anybody notice anything? Did you notice it? Oh, wait, I'm going to have to get the Jeopardy music too. But um, if I get the Jeopardy music, I'm definitely not uploading this on YouTube. But um, we wasn't talking about the video game. We was talking about everything social and political. Everything social and political under the under the almight sun. She said this. The mermaids feel like this. The fact that you can even call yourself a mermaid is crazy. But it, I mean, it's not because, you know, I'm not, this ain't the episode for that. Um, you know, and it's like. We ain't we ain't, we ain't speak about nothing about the game. The, the game is trash. The, the spells don't work. What is this mechanic? Why, when you get on the broom, it drop down? None of that. Nothing. Nothing. No reviews of the game. People are boycotting the game because apparently J.K. Rowling, from what is being reported and from what it sounds like to me, sounds like she don't like trans people. Either she don't like them or she just doesn't support the idea of what a trans person is. Now, like I said, this furthers the conversation of the from the forespoken thing. Why? Because you can go through that and, you know, I got through it forespoken. And this only continues the situation. Why? Because now the livelihood of this game hangs on the thread of social views, political views. She said something about them and they don't like it. Now, all of a sudden, the game is about to go to shit. Developers ain't going to make no money. People not going to get paid. People going to be mad if you play the game. Okay, but what if I said this? 12 years a slave and all the new slave movies coming out make me feel some type of way. So if you go see it, I'm going to need you to give me money because it make me feel bad. You're going to look at me like, hold up. Hey. I'm going big screen. You're going to look at me and go like, well, hold up. It's the same shit. And, and I just find it funny that, you know, as far as I'm in America anyway, this is the world that, that we coming in, that we coming into as far as whatever the case may be. And this gets me, and this gets us off of video games completely. And this is what I don't like about this stuff. This is what I don't like. This goes back to, to what I was talking about with Frost, F-R-O-S-K, from G4 when she went on her whole rant about sexism in gaming. I'm like, bro, it don't belong here. Because somebody said you was ugly. Okay, so you want me. You want people to sit here and talk to you nice because to somebody you may or may not be attractive. I got to break it to y'all, man. Somebody is somebody looked at me before and thought, damn, he ugly. I can't do shit about it. That's them. That ain't me. I'm not ugly. They think I'm ugly. I ain't got nothing to do with them. That's on them. I don't give a damn. Cool, let me be ugly. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> like, like, bruh, it's, it's a lot easier for me to be ugly in your eyes and pretty in the next ones. I do not care. I do not care. 
Now, because I know all my LMNOP people, y'all gonna get y'all probably get mad sensitive right now. You don't care. You don't do it. You just as bad as her. We should boycott your show. We should do it. Hey man, look. Hold up. I was just having this conversation. I was just having this conversation. Like I said earlier, I was just having this conversation before I got on the show. It's a lot of agendas and it's a lot of things going on right now. And it's in all genres of entertainment, celebrityism, you know, it's everywhere, right? And it may or may not even be an agenda. But matter of fact, it is. But nonetheless, when I say it may or may not, it may not be intentional, right? If you feel, you're gonna feel how you feel. And I get not and I give people that all the time. I can kick it with anybody. I don't care, but I'm gonna draw a line and let it be known. This is the line we not crossing. Cross the line, then we gonna have problems. I really don't care. But when we start going this far, right? J.K. Rowling, she she's she's against trans or she's just not with it. At the end of the day, you will never be able to erase what you were naturally born as. It's nothing you can do about that. You will never be able to erase it. So accept it and get over it. Now, as far as you wanting to change into whatever you want to do, like an anamorph, by all means, go ahead. I don't care. Me personally, as Dev the Gamer, the guy himself, I still see you as a person, which means, hey, when we stand in line, I'm not about to sit here and be like, oh, now, if I do, it's just a reaction because, well, I've been conditioned in such a way because I've lived in a certain point of time and or my mindset was a certain type of way. But at the same time, it's just it's not normal right it's just not normal it's not the normal but am i open-minded enough to accept that it is what it is yes but i'm not about to sit here and boycott hogwarts legacy because y'all feel some type of way about jk Rowling. what the fuck hell no oh i don't even think I... yeah gucci said i ain't working bro gucci said i ain't working <laughs> But um, yeah, bro, no, that's that's crazy. Now, granted, I'm not playing this game no way. But if I was, yeah, I'm not letting y'all about to deter me because y'all don't like what she said. Okay, y'all don't like what she said. I'm gonna play the game. I'm gonna play the game. Do I care about political and social agendas and views, or do I care about the goddamn game? And this is where we at. And this, and everything I spoke of from the beginning of level. To news to now is the reason why video games suck today. All of this is the reason why video games suck balls today. It's why they fucking suck. Cause everybody is bitching and complaining about shit that ain't got shit to do with shit. Excuse the language for the sensitive ears, but the shit be irking me, man. It be irking me. Y'all sitting here complaining. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Elemental P people, y'all coming up, y'all want to rights, y'all didn't get rights, y'all doing this, y'all doing that. Asian people talk about, let's stop being racist towards white people. And it's like, bro, are you serious? Like, one of the pillars, if not one of the main pillars that built this country was racism. Like, what the, the fuck, are you dumb? <laughs> like, dang, bro, these white people must be treating you hella good. They didn't gave y'all the law, and they must have put Vaseline on your booty hole. I don't under, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But what I do know is, look, we got to stop with this bullshit, man. This is why video games suck nowadays. This is why gaming is ass. This is why it's ass. Point blank, period. This is why it's ass. I don't give a fuck what the hell J.K. Rowling like. I don't give a damn what the fuck she do. If I'm going to play Hogwarts Legacy, I'm going to play Hogwarts Legacy. Legacy. Because maybe I want to fly around for three hours on a goddamn motherfucking broomstick cast the spells and shit you ever think about that you ever think about that what does that have to do with anything nothing literally nothing forespoken it's, it's 30 frames per second it's 30, nigga i don't give a fuck i will worry about it being 30 frames per second 720p i will worry about shit being this that bad performance wise if the rest of the if the gameplay don't hold up if the gameplay don't hold up then that's the trifecta right there the gameplay don't hold up the game look like dog water and it's 30 frames a second dog water ass shit what the hell
my bro. The shit just does not belong here in gaming. I'm gonna say it. I said it then when Frost went tripping and she wanted to bring up sexism in gaming. And I said, listen, it just don't belong here because why? Somebody in the equation is they pointing fingers and is three pointing back or they sticking a foot in a fucking mouth. What what happened? I brought up the I brought up the clip where the B where BBC News they did a whole thing on uh, uh girls in esports and what happened? They said the girl spoke for all the rest of the girls and they agreed with her that they would not compete in an all women's tournament because it would be no point in playing. She literally said it wouldn't be a point. It would be no fun. What the hell? Which means women playing against women said by a woman would be no fun, which means guess what? Deal with it. Deal with how us men play the game. Quit crying. Quit whining, quit crying. You did all this shit because you want to play with the big boys. Now you want to play with the big boys and now you want to cop please and want us to change how we play the game. What? Now you want me to change? No, 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 no. Oh, elemental P people. Okay, what y'all want? What do y'all want? Y'all want people to start creating video games or not creating video games because they did or didn't say something? I'm not trying to be insensitive intentionally. I'm just saying, bro, like at what point is the demands and shit outlandish as hell? At what point is a lot of this stuff just becoming outlandish? Like, like it should be irritating me, man. It, it just be irritating me, bro. This is why video games, this is why gaming sucks today. This is why gaming sucks today. That's why gaming sucks. They keep talking about gameplay trailers and it's a whole fucking five minute movie scene. They keep talking about life is strange. You, you're right, nigga, life is strange. I'm dropping M-bombs and everything. Life is strange, bruh. What the fuck else is new? Nothing. Like, bruh, come on, bruh. Come on, man. Come on, man. We got to get this stuff together, bruh. We got to get it together. All my LGBTQ plus people. I'm all for you standing up for what you think you need to stand for, but don't start penalizing gamers and video games for whatever it is. At the end of the day, everybody not going to like everybody and everybody not going to do everything. It's just what it is, man. I'm not taking no size in this. I'm not picking no size in this. I'm just clearly bringing bring it to light and bring it to the understanding of everybody who rocks with me and people who watch this show that everything from the beginning to now of level two news is the reason why gaming sucks nowadays. It's the reason why we all done got older. We all got kids. We got older kids, higher, fire, higher, fire, careers, this, that, and the third. It is what it is. And then all of a sudden, everything is a socialist agenda, it's political, it's NWO, it's Illuminati, it's this, 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 it's that, that, that. People can and can't. you damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's, oh, you can't say that. You're going to offend people. You can't do this. You're going to do that. Bruh, I'm, I'm about done, bro. I'm about done with a lot of this shit. You know what? This is where everybody need to go right now, but me. Listen, kid. I think you'd be more comfortable over at that place. Weenie Hut Juniors? Are you saying I belong at Weenie Hut Juniors? Uh, oh no, sorry. I was actually pointing to the place next to it. Super Weenie Hut Juniors? Everybody need to go to Super Weenie Hut Junior, Junior and take a time out, man. Super Weenie Hut Junior and take a time out. Go to Super Weenie Hut Junior. Take a whole time out. Cause this ain't it. This ain't it. This just ain't it. This just ain't it, man. I don't know what else to say, but this shit ain't it. The culture of gaming today just ain't it. It, it just ain't it. If we ain't, I, I, well, I'm gonna keep doing what I do. And when I play games, talk about the game, review the games, and be concerned about the game, I'm not concerned about people's political views, who they do and don't like, 
who they do and don't want to fuck, who they do and don't want to, I don't give a damn. If you made it to this point of the show, it's the end of the show. Appreciate you watching the gamers den. Um, this is probably going to get me uh, mad subscribers lost. I don't even know if I can upload a clip from this, from this episode on YouTube. I ain't even going to lie to you. But if you made it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Um, once again, High Score Sunday's mini series finale is this Sunday. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dave the Gamer. Also, tap in. I'm streaming consistently every Friday and Sunday until further notice. Um, yeah. And, and, and shout out to all my people. Shout out to everybody. And I'm going to catch y'all next time, man. Go.